Russia's sole aircraft carrier, the Admiral Kuznetsov, is on the brink of retirement, according to several Russian experts and sources monitoring its repair efforts. The Telegram channel BTVT.info reported that multiple unnamed sources have indicated that repair work on the Admiral Kuznetsov has been halted. The Russian armed forces may abandon the ship and send it for scrapping. Ironically, this could be the best thing to happen to the Russian armed forces as a useless aircraft carrier that never leaves the repair dock, which they don't know how to use and which loses planes, is a black hole for siphoning off funds, btvt.info commented. However, the channel also suggested that Russian generals might devise another financial scheme, such as turning the ship into a floating museum. Since the late 1990s, the Admiral Kuznetsov has been plagued by problems. Its first major overhaul, which began in 1996, dragged on for years due to funding shortages. In 2017, the ship entered a new phase of extensive modernization in Murmansk, aimed at upgrading its outdated equipment, including the replacement of boilers and gas turbine units. The plan was for the carrier to return to active service by 2021, but that deadline was never met. The costs, initially estimated at around 50 billion rubles, quickly ballooned, exceeding 100 billion rubles according to recent estimates. The repair process was marred by a series of incidents that turned the Admiral Kuznetsov into a symbol of the challenges facing Russia's military industry. In 2018, during repair work, a massive crane collapsed onto the deck leaving a 4 by 5 meter hole and the floating dock housing the ship sank. A year later, a fire on board claimed two lives and injured 14 others, causing damage worth half a billion rubles. In 2022, when the ship was finally removed from the dock and placed at the quay, another fire broke out, though it was quickly extinguished. These incidents, combined with the unexpected need to replace all four gas turbine units instead of just one as originally planned, delayed the ship's return to the fleet, first to 2023 and then to 2024. By 2023, the Admiral Kuznetsov was left without a crew, further complicating the repair efforts. The total damage from fires and flooding exceeded 150 billion rubles, and the cost of continuing the work became increasingly difficult to justify. Former Pacific Fleet Commander Admiral Sergei Avakians publicly supported halting the repairs, arguing that aircraft carriers are expensive and inefficient compared to modern unmanned systems shaping the future of military technology. However, opinions remain divided. Military expert Captain First Rank Vasily Dandkin insists that such ships are critical to maintaining Russia's naval power. Beyond spending more time in repair docks, the Admiral Kuznetsov cannot boast an impressive combat record. Its most significant involvement in military operations was during Russia's intervention in Syria in 2016-2017. In October 2016, the carrier was deployed to the Eastern Mediterranean as part of Russia's military campaign in support of the Bashar Assad government. From its deck, Su-33 and MiG-29K fighters carried out airstrikes against targets in Syria, including rebel and terrorist group positions. However, the mission was marred by issues. Two aircraft, one MiG-29K and one Su-33, were lost due to technical failures during landing, underscoring the ships and its systems' unreliability. The mission lasted a few months, after which the Admiral Kuznetsov returned to Russia in January 2017 to begin its prolonged repairs. Before the Syria campaign, the Admiral Kuznide had not participated in large-scale combat operations, but was used in various exercises and patrols, primarily in the Barents Sea, Black Sea, and Atlantic Ocean. During the 1990s, 
Due to financial difficulties following the collapse of the USSR, the ship often remained at anchor or in repair, limiting its operational activity. Its involvement in international missions was largely demonstrative, such as its presence in the Mediterranean in 2007, 2008 and 2011, 2012, when it conducted exercises and showcased military power without engaging in actual combat. Although designed to carry up to 40 aircraft and helicopters, the Admiral Kuznetsov's actual capacity during missions was significantly lower due to technical limitations and a lack of sufficiently trained personnel. Additionally, the ship is notorious for issues with its fuel oil engines, which often made it the subject of mockery due to its heavy smoke emissions. Russia's plans to build a new aircraft carrier have been under discussion for years but remain shrouded in uncertainty due to financial, technical and strategic challenges. Over the past few decades, Russian leadership has repeatedly expressed ambitions to modernize its navy, including through the development of a new aircraft carrier to replace the troubled Admiral Kuznetsov. However, these plans frequently collide with the realities of limited resources and infrastructure issues. In 2015, Russia announced an ambitious project for a new super aircraft carrier, dubbed Project 23000E Storm, developed by the Krylov State Research Center. The ship was envisioned to be comparable to U.S. supercarriers like the Gerald R. Ford class, with a displacement of about 90,000 to 100,000 tons, and the capacity to carry up to 90 aircraft, including modernized fighters like a naval version of the Su-57. According to statements from 2017, this carrier was expected to enter service by 2030, but by 2020, the project still lacked official approval, with costs estimated at over $5.5 billion. In 2021, Andrei Yelchaninov, first deputy chairman of Russia's Military Industrial Commission, mentioned that the construction of a new aircraft carrier was being considered within the state armament program for 2024 to 2033. In 2024, Admiral Nikolai Evmenov, commander-in-chief of the Russian Navy, confirmed to Krasnaya Zvezda that building a new aircraft carrier would enhance operational task efficiency, but he provided no specific timelines or details. Despite these statements, the project's realization remains in doubt. Russia lacks shipyards capable of constructing such a large vessel, as Soviet-era aircraft carriers, including the Admiral Kuznetsov, were built in Mykolaiv, now part of Ukraine. In 2011, the construction of a new shipyard in Severodvinsk, or Vladivostok, was proposed, but by 2025, no progress had been made. Moreover, the war in Ukraine and international sanctions have worsened Russia's financial situation, making such an expensive project even more challenging to pursue. Experts estimate that even if approved, building a new aircraft carrier could take a decade, with a lack of trained crews and suitable bases further complicating matters. Strategically, Russia has traditionally focused on submarines and smaller coastal defense ships, rather than aircraft carriers which are better suited for projecting power on the open seas, a role that is not a priority for the Russian Navy. Some military experts, such as former Deputy Chief of the Russian Navy's General Staff Vice Admiral Vladimir Pepelyaev, argue that aircraft carriers are essential to maintaining Russia's status as a naval power. But others, like an anonymous expert from the Russian Naval Academy, believe the project is overly ambitious and likely to remain on paper. Instead of an aircraft carrier, Russia appears to be prioritizing other projects, such as the Ivan Rogov class, Project 23900 amphibious assault ships, which can carry helicopters and unmanned aerial vehicles and support landing operations. These ships, being built in Crimea, are seen as a more practical alternative for the Russian Navy, particularly given the current geopolitical constraints, 